So we first came to Provincetown nearly 25 years ago and it's had this magical pull on me ever since uh, and I kind of sneak away here every moment I get and I'm, I'm like a kid wanting to run off to summer camp. Uh, we come out with our dogs and spend the entire summer here from San Francisco. So it's a big trip and uh, we try to stay here as much as we can. We live in what I affectionately call the, the Grey Gardens of Provincetown. It was this wonderful, forgotten, sort of derelict house that everyone would walk by and point at. Uh, of course, I fell in love with it and uh, spent the best part of a year, it actually happened pretty quickly, lovingly restoring it, keeping as much of the old character as possible. So most people, when they have a beach house, they have it be serene, the rooms are very sparse, it's all about looking out at the water. And yes, the views are incredible here, but I just want to be inside here as well. The way you've decorated, it's timeless. It could be 1950, it could be yesterday, it could be the future. There's just this wonderful mood inside. You know, Provincetown really isn't a place for traditional beach houses. It's, a, it's an old whaling and fishing village. Uh, it's actually where the pilgrims first landed uh, and you know it's it's New England it's not uh, the sort of quaint little beachside town and so it never felt appropriate to have the white sofas and the seashells strewn around it's much more layered and rugged so really anywhere that we could leave the original house exposed where you could see the years and the life that had happened in the house I did my best to do so. It really gives the house its sort of flavor and character. Uh, I think it's the most remarked about thing at the house. Although I'm, I must say people come into our house who I don't think quite understand it and ask me if I'm going to be renovating it. And so <laughs> I, I giggle, but uh, that's, that's actually the, the nicest thing they could probably say to me. And I think it means that I, I did a good job. Oh, the mural in your dining room. It's, it looks, if you were to walk quickly by, you'd think that this was here when you bought the house, but obviously you commissioned this. Right? I, I did. It's a, a mural of the Provincetown waterfront, and a lovely man named Raphael who works for me. So he came in the winter and spent three weeks. It's one of the few really decorative things that we did to the house. I was very respectful of sort of not decorating She's using it up too much. Yeah. And so this was one place where we took the liberty and it's probably one of my favorite things in the house. Any kitchen with dark patina and the old fashioned, like these colors is just so rich and beautiful. Everyone when I would walk them through before we began the renovation would say, you know, of course you're going to blow the kitchen out, you'll put a big family room and kitchen yeah, across the back of the house. And the TV screen over and, here. And, and I'm like, absolutely not. When putting the kitchen together, I'd imagine, I couldn't imagine a white kitchen here. It just isn't, P-Town isn't that kind of place. And this isn't that kind of house for sure. And so I wanted this oily brown, funny, non-color. I, I feels very English to me somehow. Uh, and it's called Tanner Brown. It's by Farrow and Ball. Your knack for not only choosing your art, but how you hang it in little surprises and big moments all around this house is really astonishing. Uh, one, Provincetown has an amazing, rich history as an art colony, and today, you know, incredible artists living and working here. But really, it's about finding things I love. I have a beautiful WPA mural that I bought in an auction. It's from here in Provincetown. Uh, art from the 50s, sort of modernist pieces to you know, 18th century sea captain portraits. Um, I do have a love of portraiture that uh, goes all the way to dog portraits. You'll probably 
have noticed, when you're on your way to the bedrooms, you'll see my large collection of dog portraits, which has followed me around to many homes, but has never sort of been more at home than here in Provincetown. So my life between San Francisco and Provincetown probably couldn't be any, any different. I think people who know me well in San Francisco might be surprised by me in Provincetown. You know, in San Francisco, we lead a really full, sort of glamorous life. But when we come to Provincetown, I, I couldn't be more the opposite. You know, I'm the sneakers and shorts and t-shirts, and I don't think I ever feel more sort of as if I exhaled than when I come to Pete's